So here's the second part of my breakdown of this programme that was produced a month after Abu Dhabi by Sky Sports F1. The contracted broadcaster has now been contracted to produce a programme trying to validate the fix and quell the dissenting voices. So what it's done, it has created this programme and it's put forward all these so-called experts to pretend that we're having this discussion about it. But ultimately, the aim is to try to get people to accept it and to move on from it. So, oh, we'll all have a chat. We'll all exchange our opinions. We'll all just say how the things that were wrong, but we'll always validate it and go, oh, well, these are the excuses for it. These are the, actually the problems that you need to be thinking of. And this was the, was the difficulties that, that race control was experiencing due to this. That is what they want you to view this as. That is what they want you. They, they want you to believe that things were just so confusing. It's really complex. It's really confusing. And with so much going on, you can all understand that mistakes were made, can't you? Yes, yes, you can all understand that, can't you? Yeah. And we can all accept that people make mistakes. We're all only human. Move on. Yeah, we can all understand that. No, because that's not how it is. That's not the truth. The truth is simple. The truth is quite simply this. In order for racing to resume, then you have to carry out procedures in order to get that restart condition. That has to happen. If an incident occurs close to the end of a race, whereby you have to intervene with the safety car, then what has to happen is the track has to be made safe and the procedure has to be carried out three laps from the end. Meaning, in this example of Abu Dhabi 2021, it was a 58 lap race. The procedure that you had to carry out because there were lapped cars, there is no other options despite what Brundle lies about, because there are lapped cars, what had to happen in order to see any racing whatsoever, those lapped cars had to be released on lap 56. Then lap 57 was a safety car lap to give those cars the chance of catching the back of the pack. And that is the only way lap 58 could have been a racing lap. Had those lapped cars not been released by the end of lap 56, it's a safety car finish. So lap 56 was the cutoff, the deadline whereby that procedure had to have been enacted in order to see any racing. It is so simple. There's no argument about it. There's no two ways about it. There's not the chance of resuming racing with lapped cars in situ. That's not an option, despite the fact that they lied to the world to present it as being an option. It's not an option. Oh, can we do this? Can we do that? Oh, he was thinking he might have been able to do this. All lies. It's simple. For clear reasons. But here, this is their validation program. Nobody said that. Nobody has been able to articulate that in simple terms. This is the clear parameters as to what should have happened, what needed to have happened. It didn't happen. And instead, Martin Brindle will say, oh, well, we've got a, a fast tracked hybrid version of the regulations. Well, that's not the regulations. You broke the rules. What they're going to do now, I'm going to just do a bit of an overlap here. So I'm going to play you what um, Johnny Herbert was finishing up saying. And then we get some waffle from the uh, anchor man. Well, you could call him an anchor man or you could start that word with a W, whichever your preference is. Um, giving us the waffle. And then they go into going, oh, here's some footage from the night that we uh, didn't have access to on the night. But it just gives you a, an idea of what it felt like from within the cockpit. And I'll, I will show you the construct of that. Because what they do, they are going to present you. They're going to bombard you with this montage of, oh, confusion. Look, nobody seems to know what's going on here. All the drivers are saying this, that and the other. The teams don't seem to know what's going on. It's chaos. And they don't break it down with any authenticity. They don't tell you that these messages that you're hearing 
they're not valid. They don't tell you that the first time Alonso is asking to be unlapped is one lap after the safety car is deployed, after he's just passed Nicholas Latifi's car and there's all white powder around it and there's smoke around it from that fire extinguisher. And, he, and straight away, knowing there's a car on the track, Alonso's going, oh, we should unlap now. You know, we need to, we need to unlap now, otherwise it'll be too late to get this job done. That's not authentic, is it, Alonso? What's this job that you need to do? And being the most experienced racer, and maybe Raikkonen was the most experienced racer at that time, I don't know. I don't really care. But having the experience that you have, you know that they don't release lapped cars with a car like that on track and Marshall Steele needing to be on track and a crane needing to be on track. You know about what happened with Jules Bianchi. You know that they don't like cars not being withheld by a safety car, making things a certain safe and allowing the crane to be on track at the same time. It's a no-no. It's a no-no. Anyway, we'll play this through. And uh, as I say, as we go through this montage, we'll see what they say and we'll, we'll identify the bullshit as always. So let's have a look. Ow the race to go green for that one lap when it's totally unfair and then with the result we got at the end of it which is very unfortunate unfortunate was totally wrong careful johnny otherwise you'll get sacked oh you did but you kept quiet during that period you've been effectively dismissed you've paid your penance you know i have served i will be of service i will now be allowed back into the boys club to be one of the FIA stewards. Okay, you've shown that you're not going to betray the fucking inner circle of them, aren't you, Johnny? That's the way this shit works for this rich man's boys club. Okay, well, well, let's go back much more on this and break it down for you from the moment that Nicholas Latifi put it in the wall at turn 14. That brought out the safety car. At that point, Lewis Hamilton had an 11 second 12 lead. So five laps remaining. And then the uncertainty in race control quickly appeared to escalate. The uncertainty in race control. There is no uncertainty in race control. What's the problem? A car has crashed. What do we need to do? Well, we need to clear this up in a safe manner. What are our options? Do we, can we clear this up under yellow flags? No, it's far more serious than that. We're going to need to remove a car from the track. Will a virtual safety car do? Well, we need to get a, tr a crane on the track and we need to sweep up debris. No, it's a safety car situation. It's a clear safety car situation. We deploy the safety car. Where's the confusion? There's no confusion. It's quite a simple decision making process. You deploy the safety car. OK, safety car deployed. What's going to happen? The cars are going to bunch behind that safety car and that safety car will take them cars around the track at a slower speed, making the environment safer for those marshals to then be on track, clearing up that car, removing that car, clearing up the debris. The clerk of the course can then do all of his checks to then say, yes, I've done my checks. The track is now safe to go racing again. At that point in time, he can say, right, I've done my checks. We're good to go. Now we can carry out the unlapping procedure. It's a clear process. There's no confusion within that. Never has been. Let's not present. Oh, it's a safety situation. Latifi crashed and nobody knew what, what they had to do. It caused confusion not only on the pit wall, but with the drivers too. This is some So the, all of the teams are confused, are they? Well, no, because you know what needs to be done. It caused confusion on the pit wall and all of the drivers didn't know either. Well, no, you do know. You play any sport. Oh, this has happened. Right, we've got to go through this now. Oh, oh, what do we do now? Oh, somebody's crashed in a Formula One Grand Prix. What do we do? We're all confused. Bullshit. The team radio that we didn't have access to on the night, but gives a fascinating take on what it felt like from the cockpits of those involved. So have a double yellow, double yellow exit turn 14. Safety car deployment. Daniel, medium or soft? There is five laps to go. Let's go soft. Daniel, we're box, we're box. Yep, box. See Lewis shaking his head there. 
he knows real time what is going on. So it's strat mode one, strat mode one. Box. Negative. Yeah, yeah copy that. Then. Stuff on the track. They gotta let you. And they did the fire thing. Yeah, yeah, copy that. Then. Stuff on the track. They gotta let you. And they did the fire thing. Yeah. Extinguisher is the word I was looking for. <laughs> Extinguisher. Roger that. What's the situation? So what Sebastian Vettel is actually saying is, mm, I know this is going to take too long. But they've actually edited that in a way that just is is putting it out there in a way that will make some people think, oh, you know, Sebastian Vettel thinks that this can happen. This No, the reality is Sebastian Vettel is looking at that and going, mm, this isn't going to happen, is it? Despite what, what we've been agreed beforehand, this desire not to finish behind the safety car, which in itself is a manipulation of a sport, which in itself is a fraud. Contriving an ending to a sporting event is a fraud. Let's be clear about that. But he realises, hmm, we're not going to be able to contrive that. So, the situation is, uh, Verstappen has pitted. He had a free pit stop. We would have lost track position to him. Four laps remaining when you cross the line. So this bump field has to bunch, and then they have to send lap cars through. So it may not restart. Is he right behind me? He will be once they've sorted out all the order. This is going to take a while to sort out. With new tyres. Uh, copy, Lewis. We would have lost track position if we had pitted. Uh, these back markers need to get out of the way. They should unlock themselves. Michael wants to get this race. So what are we saying? Max Verstappen telling everybody these back markers should get out of the way. Well, they're, they're, it's not that they're in the way, Max. You never actually made it past them. Lewis was fast enough to overtake them during the race. You never did. So you just want them clearing out of your way. Lewis was five seconds, sorry, 12 seconds ahead of you. And he had made it one by one past each of them cars. You never did. But you're going, oh, they should now get out of the way. See? This is all part of the narrative. It's all part of the narrative. You never lapped them. You never got past them, Verstappen. They just got out of your way. So that you could be right on the back of Lewis Hamilton. But that's not the purpose of it. But no, you had to say that on the radio, didn't you? And Because that was part of your script. So that, that could be played to the world. So that then you strap on fanboys that don't know anything about the sport would go, yeah, get them out of the way of Max. We're back to Vettel. Started. You should let us through. Stay behind safety. So lap 54. Look at these lap numbers for the team radios. They should let us through. We're seeing marshals on the track at the end of lap 56. These, mar these, these messages that they are playing to you are invalid and they won't explain to you that they're invalid. The reason they're invalid is these drivers are driving around. They, they're, they're giving these messages to their teams, but they're doing so without knowledge. You're in the hands of the clerk of the course. He's in charge of safety. So shut the fuck up. OK, you just drive around that track and let that incident be dealt with. Oh, we should unlap now. No, safety is not your responsibility. Safety is the responsibility of the clerk of the course. And we've got drivers going, oh, we should unlap now. We should unlap now. We should unlap now. Shut up. We'll clear the track, which is what's required. We'll make sure it is safe to go racing. And then we'll carry out the procedure. That wasn't done until the end of lap 56. All these messages are irrelevant. Sky Sports are playing these to you as if they have some sort of relevance. They're all dismissible. They're all dismissible. There's no point in making noise if it doesn't have fucking relevance. Do you mean massive advantage to some people? Yeah, we should unlap and get this. Right, lap 54. We should unlap and get this job done, is Alonso on lap 54. The lap after the safety car has been deployed. We can see Marshall's on trap at the end of lap 56. And Alonso is saying this on lap 54. And that's convinced thousands of the strap-on fanboys that that was possible. 
You only need to look at the comments section of my videos and you'll see the retards that think that that was possible. Get job done until they retire the car because if not... And get this job done. Let's see. let's go and listen to Alonso again, right? We should unlap now and get this job done. What's this job, Alonso? What's this job? Behind safety car. Giving massive advantage to some people. Yeah, we should unlap and get the job done until they retire the car. Because if not, it's going to be too late. How many cars are behind me and in between us? Uh, five cars between you. Uh, the field still hasn't bunched. How many laps left? There'll be three when you cross the line. I mean, they need to... See, by Lewis Hamilton asking that question, that is playing into the notion that racing can resume with lap cars in situ. That's not possible. It strikes me that somebody like Martin Brundle will have briefed the teams and the drivers of that being some sort of possibility within the regulations. This notion of unlapping the lap cars, oh, that's not mandatory in the regulations. That was just one of the things that Charlie Whiting liked to do. No. Why is it done every time? If it's optional, why do you see it done every time? Why would the regulations have been written that way? Always ask the why. Well, follow it through. What does it achieve? What does not doing it achieve? Oh, there's a purpose. By not doing it, you skew the outcomes for competitors. Well, that's not sporting fairness to all competitors, is it? You have a FIA International Sporting Code. You're conducting this as a sport. So you cannot allow a crash, a safety situation, to impact the chances of the competitors in differing ways. Oh, there's a reason. That makes it mandatory, doesn't it? Doesn't say that it's optional. It just says safety car. So if the safety car is to be used in the race, this is what happens. That's all it does. Doesn't doesn't say, oh, but you can do this or you can do that. Or the race director has overrided. The over, only overriding authority that the race director has is to prolong its use, to keep it on track if he is not satisfied that things are safe. OK, or he's not satisfied that sporting fairness has been restored to all competitors. That is his overriding authority. It's on the grounds of safety and sporting fairness, not to cut the procedure short which will guarantee to impact sporting fairness. Very simple. The, the likes of Brundle, the likes of Horner, these plotters will have got their heads together and been able to convince everybody else. So they've come up with the scheme, they've come up with the plan, and they've managed to convince everybody else, well, we can sell it to them that this is how things are. And therefore, the race director has this within his discretion to be able to make this call. And if he does, you need to just go with it. Otherwise, these drivers are thick as fuck. If they believe that and they can't see the outcomes, these teams, if they believe that and can't see the outcomes generated, they're wrong. It is as simple as that. You're wrong. Start the procedure now. Max, those lap cars are now being allowed to overtake. Lap cars are now allowed to overtake. Are not. So, on Twitter, uh, F1WDC2021, uh, I think it's called, I'll, I'll um, put the, I don't know if it's, let me double, double check that. Yeah, it was right. This is the Twitter uh, user that's um, investigating this part of it. Um, from what he has been able to turn up, it seems that Red Bull got that message ahead of all the other teams. Red Bull were notified that these five lapped cars were going to be gotten out of the way before anybody else. Rather strange, that, isn't it? Rather strange. Anyway, we'll carry on with this. Sorry, cancel that. Lap cars will not be allowed to overtake. Oh, I, they're not going to overtake, actually. They're not. Yeah, of course. Typical decision. It's classic. I'm not surprised. OK. These messages that are being interjected, the, what you're seeing here isn't when these messages were being played. OK, this message that you're hearing now took place down this straight, but it took down it took place down the entire length of this straight. So 
what they're doing now, they are just editing this as an edit and playing the sound, but it's not it's not what it how it actually took place in reality. <laughs> very very strange. Very unfair. It's not my race these guys and I will have to race them. See, why has a competitor got it into his head that something is not his race? It's a Grand Prix. Is every other Grand Prix of the season not your race, Carlos Sainz? Oh, it, 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 what, it's round one, it's round two, it's round three, it's round four, it's round 17 of the Formula One calendar. Oh, yeah, this is not my race. Um, I'm not going to challenge for first or second in this race. I'll, I'll just I'll just wait here in third place. It's not my race. Hmm. Have they all sat down and decided beforehand that it's not their race? This is just a race off between Max and Lewis. Well, what are you doing there? What's the agreement there to manipulate the result of the sport? It's just a two car shootout. Well, that's not a Grand Prix, is it? Why is it not your race, Carlos? He's not going to allow us to uh, unlap ourselves. Ha ha ha. Right, so we're lap 56 and he's not going to allow you to unlap yourself. And that amuses Alonso. Ha 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 ha. What are you laughing for, Alonso? What are you laughing for, laughing boy? As we're coming round turn 14 and the marshals are literally jumping over the barrier now. Jumping off the track now. And you're laughing, are you, Alonso? That would be the reason why you weren't allowed to unlap. Oh, and you're just about to go on to lap 57. That being the earliest that that instruction could be given. And what does that mean? It means that then lap 58 is a safety car lap. Safety car finish. <laughs> just let us through and start the race. There's still lower lower debut down. Again, Sebastian Vettel, just let us through and start the race. Well, Sebastian, that's not your call, Sebastian. The call is given by the clerk of the course, who has in his role the responsibility for safety. The safety of the track, the, the responsibility to you, the drivers, that when the order is given to start racing, that track is safe. So none of you die by racing on an un unsafe track. He's got a responsibility to the marshals to make sure that nobody gets hit. He's got that responsibility. The sport has got a history of having to deal with shit. A history of dealing with shit such as this, where this marshal's leg gets totally fucked. Do you want to watch that again? So what happens? The sport learn its lessons. When something like that happens, what you have to do is put in place rules, regulations, procedures to ensure that it doesn't happen again. So you have to minimise the risk. Risk assessment. Develop that. Now, some of you pricks in the comments section don't understand that because you're 14 year old little wank boys that don't understand. That's never had this sort of shit explained to you. You think everything's a computer game where, oh, if you crash, then it's not a problem. The game just restarts and everybody just gets put on back on track and off we go again. That's not how real life works, dickheads. Anyway. Back to this validation programme created by F1 TV, Lazenby and Chums. Down there. And copy that, Lewis. I don't understand why he's not letting us through. Sebast uh, Sebastian Vettel. So, he, sh he just said on lap 56, they should let us go and then start the race. Well, Sebastian, you might not care because you're in 11th position and you're not even going to try now. OK, so you don't care. Fine. But the reality is you have to be given that mandatory safety car lap with which to catch the back of the pack to restore the correct start condition. 
Now you're on lap 57. You're on lap 57, and even if you're released on this lap, you have to be given a mandatory safety car lap. This is a safety car finish. What are Sky Sports F1 showing you? Oh, Sebastian's saying this on lap 57. It's invalid. So why would you play this to the world if it's invalid? Oh, well, what we're doing, we're constructing the narrative of all the drivers being confused by this. Even the drivers didn't know what was going on. Well, why won't you know what's going on? Who's told you what the rules are? Who's told you how this is going to play out? What the collective desire is? Oh, how we would like to contrive the ending of this race if possible. Oh, how are we going to do this? This doesn't like, look like the contrivance they said that they wanted to achieve. Oh, what are they going to do? That's where your confusion comes in. That's why you're all confused. Because you can see, well, this is not going to work, is it? The plan isn't going to work. Oh, that's a contrivance, isn't it? Strange that. Let's listen to Sebastian from the start. And copy that, Lewis. I don't understand why he's not letting us through. He's just messing this thing up. So he's, gonna... he's just messing this thing up. What is this thing, Sebastian? Tell us what this thing is. What is this thing? Why are drivers saying he's messing this thing up or let's get this job done? What is this thing? What is this job done? Right, you're lapping behind a safety car because of a safety incident, right? Now, why are you concerned about some job being needing to be done? The racing will commence if it's possible to commence. You're impacted by whether or not you can achieve a world championship point or not, or whether you can you know, have the chance of gaining position. Sebastian Vettel there is going, he's just messing this thing up. <laughs> What is this thing that he's messing up, Sebastian? What do all the drivers know? What do all the drivers know that he's messing up? Going to let four cars through. Uh, everybody behind you will stay in position. Yes, yeah, so everybody. Everybody behind you, Max, will stay in position. See? Red Bull telling Max that everyone behind him will stay in position. Now, look at where he is. Why has he been told here? This is on, on from turn eight down to turn nine. There's plenty of time for those three behind Max to be allowed through. Why are they not being allowed through? Everybody up to Vettel are allowed to overtake Hamilton. OK, you've been told to overtake. That's you can overtake. Right yeah. You can overtake yeah. Hamilton. Yeah. Yeah. Safety car has yeah. the green light. Yeah. You can overtake, overtake. What are these two guys doing? They are not unlocking themselves. They Oh, so Carlos, no, what they're doing, Carlos, they're staying there so that Max has got this shield to prevent you from challenging him, even though you wasn't going to, because, you know, you've already resigned yourself to the fact that this is not your race. You're not allowed to win this one because that doesn't look good on the TV. The winner of this one that's going to win the world championship also has to win the race. We don't want to see this with a Ferrari winning. We want to see either Lewis or Max winning, don't we? We want to create that spectacle. And then all the fireworks will go off. And it, not, you don't get yourself involved in that, Carlos. Don't you worry your little head. They need to go. Restart like this. They restart like this. S1 for the restart. Oh, so we've got a team now. Team right radio. So Ferrari are telling us, oh, we restart like this. We restart like this. They're not saying, well, what are they doing here? You're not allowed to restart like this. All lapped cars have got to be released. And after they've been released, that safety car has got to stay on track for another lap. But Team Radio to Science, oh, they restart like this. That's that's not normal. Why are you making it sound normal? Uh, this car is overtaking the safety car. Not, not us, not us. Stay with <laughs> Aston Martin, not us, not us. And uh, the, the beauty of Lance Stroll, he's like... What the fuck is this all about? Stay where you are. Stay where you are. I don't understand why I should be able to overtake the safety car. Uh, so there's an advert right there. So what Aston Martin will then tell him is that keep quiet, Lance. Don't worry. We'll tell you later. We'll tell you later when this isn't being broadcast to the world. This has been manipulated, man. 
the safety car. This is getting manipulated, man. I understand why I shouldn't be able to overtake the safety car. This is getting manipulated, man. Yes, yes, it has. Big style. Oh my lord, Max! Oh. The, uh, oh, the audacity of Red Bull, of these, uh, well, Max Verstappen and all these Red Bull personnel celebrating what they know to be a fake victory. That is just, uh, I'll never get my head around that. How you can celebrate something you know isn't authentic like that. Well, these people can rot. They can rot. Oh, yes! Yes! Oh, my God! Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just speechless, Lewis. Absolutely speechless. Best track of flag will explain what happened, will explain later. There you go. Aston Martin to stroll. Yeah, don't worry, don't worry, Lance. Shh. Just be quiet. Shh. We'll explain later. Yeah, man, what the I got no idea what, what they uh, what they did with letting cars through. Obviously I wasn't wasn't really in that anyways. But it seems strange. Yeah, what was that all about? What was that all about? Well that was a setup. That's what it was, Daniel. It was a setup. Yeah, it was a bit unusual. Unfortunately, the uh, that pit stop. Oh, it was a it was a bit unusual. McLaren McLaren's pit. So that the, the McLaren being complicit. Yeah, that was a bit unusual. Well, that's not in the rules, is it? Oh yeah, and then tyres that we changed you on, which is also a gamble because you know had we not been able to go racing, which we couldn't have done. Okay, but had we been able to, you'd have had the benefit of them. Well, they broke the rules to make racing happen, but they broke the rules as well to make sure that you couldn't use them. Hmm. <laughs> but that's fine. We won't protest. We'll just play our role and we'll just take the money because we're McLaren. Stop at the end, which I think would have been a good idea, didn't work because they only let through some of the cars. But why? No, no, no. It didn't work, right? Because you couldn't go racing, so you wouldn't have been able to use them. But they broke the rules just to set it up for Max to be able to use his. And the two Alpha Tauri's got to use theirs as well. But everybody else, no, 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 we're not interested in use. We're only interested in Red Bull and the Red Bull B team being able to make an advantage for us breaking the rules. The rest of you, don't you worry about it. Why did they not let us go straight away? Uh, I'll tell you why, Sebastian. Because it wasn't safe to do so. Are you the clerk of the course, Sebastian? Were you aware of what was going on at turn 14? Were you aware that those marshals were jumping off the track as you were completing lap 56 so it wasn't safe to release anybody until lap 57, Sebastian? And had you been released on lap 57, which you were, that safety car had to remain on track to give you the extra lap so it's a safety car finish. Yeah, you, you, you're not the thickest guy, so you, you're pretty intelligent, Seb. You know this. Why are, you, why are you saying this on the radio? This is what I still don't understand. I'm glad I'm not a part of that. Whatever just happened, it seemed... I'll tell you, well, you were a part of it. You were a part of it, because like everybody, you've remained silent ever since. Nobody's ever told the truth on this. But you will. With the right amount of pressure, people will start squealing. When they realise what is at stake for each and every one of them, they will start squealing. They'll come clean. They'll say who is actually putting the pressure on them. This is going to happen. Uh, pretty up. Okay, Martin, um, just if you could, just, just pray see the mistakes that Michael Massey made on the night. Okay, I'll go into uh, what Martin has to say in the next video. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to publish this one now on YouTube. That showed you the construct of, that is the footage montage that F1 TV have put together. They've done it purposefully to create this notion, this create this um, story of, look at what happened. It was all confusing. Nobody really seemed to know what was going on. And they just constructed that. They've just put all that together with all these messages, all these drivers sounding confused, all this, oh, what seems to be going on here? Why aren't they doing this? Why aren't they doing that? Oh, now on this lap, this is happening. They just put that together. When what they could have done is say, 
what needed to happen was that the lapped cars needed to have been released by the end of lap 56. Oh, this is the end of lap 56. We see marshals here jumping over the barriers. That demonstrates that it wasn't safe to release those lap cars. So all these messages that you hear of these drivers saying we need to unlap now, we can disregard them because they're not relevant. Then drivers aren't aware of what is actually taking place on the track. So they should just shut the fuck up and drive until they're given the instruction by those who are in charge of safety that it's now safe. So then they get that instruction. However, if it's not possible to release them by the end of lap 56, then it's a safety car finish. Because even if they are released on lap 57, that safety car has to stay on track for lap 58. It's a safety car finish. Lewis Hamilton should be an eight-time world champion. The FIA needs to go back, acknowledge that, acknowledge that the rules were broken, and in doing so, it changed the result of that event. So the governing body needs to take responsibility for that and amend it to what is correct because you cannot rob an individual of what would have been a valid accomplishment through breaking the rules of the sport to change the outcome because that is clearly what has happened here. Sky Sports didn't want to tell you that. It's quite clear and easy to articulate that. They didn't want to tell you that. Instead, they created that montage to, to create this picture of confusion as validation. Look, everybody, look, nobody seemed to know what was going on. The drivers didn't know. The teams didn't know. Race control seemed to be changing its mind. Look, it was crazy, wasn't it? No. No, that's just the picture you want to paint. That's just the way that you want to be able to say, right, we can get away with fixing this if we pretend it was all chaotic. There was no intent. It was just chaos. And this was just like a fast track hybrid solution of the regulations. So we're going to go into what Brundle said in the next video. Realise it's a construct. See through the media bullshit. See through the media bullshit. Right. The next one will be along soon.